Jay Motti here from Stretford Paddock, and this is the one-on-one -on -one interview when we're talking to former United starlet Bojan Jordic, the former Jimmy Murphy Player of the Year. We're going to be asking him, obviously, about the Super League, which sort of came and went within about three days. Bojan, how are we doing? Uh, much better now. Uh, I told you before, before we started in quarters, I actually felt really down. I know the game has been taken over by money, uh, by greed. Uh, rich people get richer, poor getting poorer. It's like a reflection on our society. But for somebody to actually propose this and some of the clubs in England, the top six clubs actually to agree on it, even if it is to pressure UEFA or pressure FIFA, it's not on. It's during a pandemic, people losing their lives, their jobs, and they're going to do this to us to use and abuse our game this game was made by people, by people, working class people, and the game should stay with the supporters. I told you now on like numerous occasions, the supporters are paying players' wages. Without the supporters, the game is nothing. And I'm so happy that actually that the supporters, as a unity, has stole these greedy people. You're not going to fill your pockets. You're not going to fill your wallets with more money. We had enough. And I hope, actually, we use this power as well to kick the shit racism out of football as well. Because if we can stand tall like one and make Super League disappear, make this racism disappear out of our game, I'm sick and tired of it on social networks, on social media, my friends getting abused, people actually getting abused because they have a different color, religion, race. Just stop with it. So, and actually also, Ed Woodward is gone. So my day is actually good. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you about that. Um, there was loads of news sort of kicking off yesterday. We heard that the teams were dropping out of the Super League one by one. And then obviously Manchester United eventually left it as well. But between all that, there was Ed Woodward leaving. What do you make of his departure, first and foremost? And how important do you think it is he's replaced with someone that actually understands football? Yeah, actually, I actually, I took a couple of whiskeys last night and I enjoyed my night. I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, but the only, the only thing is that the Glazers still left at our club. So they, they can always find another Woodward. They can always clone him. There's 100 Woodwards in this world. They'll be willing to take part of Manchester United and be like, uh, and be like the, uh, how do you call it in English? You know, when some, somebody's actually uh, putting you to places and they're actually giving you the power to make changes that are just good for your wallets, for your benefit. Uh, so at the same time, as I'm happy, I just hope now they understand that this is our club. It's always going to be our club. And we need people in footballing positions, making footballing moves and proposals, getting footballing side right. Listen, getting sponsors in, yeah, great. Look at the deals he's got. Is, that, is it that hard, actually, to get sponsors to a club like Manchester United? We're not talking about Altrincham. We're talking one of the world's biggest brands. I can be, I can, I can be the marketing guy to getting the sponsorships in. It's not hard. So at the same time now, we have to actually call Amsterdam we have to call Ajax and tell them, please, can you, can you let Mr. Van der Sar leave his job so he can come to our club and make things better? We need to be competing about the Premier Leagues. We need to be competing far in the Champions League. We cannot just be settling, making it into the Champions League. We cannot just be settling being 10 to 15 points behind the league leaders. It's not on. We waited for nine years. It's almost 10 next year. It's enough. Completely agree with all that, Bojan. Um, do you think, though, with these owners, no matter, you just said it there about changing a different, you know, different chief executive or whatever, do you think with the same owners that's going to make much of a difference? Do you think it, it matters? Listen, at the same time, uh, this has been like a cash machine for the Glazers. We know that. You know yourself that I've, I was one of the first ones to criticise the ownership, the way I thought my club was ran, because they were taking our life, they were taking our heart out of our club. They were making this club more about the supporters outside Manchester than for the people in Manchester. You know what I mean? It was more coming to Old Trafford to be a tourist. Enjoy your prawn sandwich, like Eno said, have a few drinks, and don't care about the result. They need to make this club back and give it back to the people. This club has history. What would Sir Matt Busby say? Why did they not listen to Sir Alex? This club was founded by people, people that hard for Manchester United and for the colours. 
I'm sick and tired of us being used as a cash machine. I feel myself as like some robots coming to Old Trafford. I need to get that passion back. I think we all do. Look at the split in the supportership we have because of our manager. We are fighting over the same club. And there's actually some supporters, they wanted us to lose so they can say, listen, Ole is not the man for the job. How can a people just stand behind the club and the manager when things are actually a little bit better than they used to be? Maybe he's not the right man in the future, but at the same time, we are in a better place than we were under Mourinho, under Van Gaal, and under David Moyes. So, you, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? So, the Glazers are still going to be there, but now the Glazers know our power. They know the power of our supporters. And if they're going to stay, if, if they're not going to sell this club at this, this moment of time, they need to put right people in charge. And hopefully, it's not going to bring us another Ed Woodward. Hopefully, we'll see a light at the end of this tunnel. And actually, we can be as a unity. Honestly, I'm so sick and tired fighting with my mates, the United supporters, over our manager and the results. I cannot believe there's actually people want us to draw a game to say, listen, look at this, look at this. Hey, are you a United supporter or not? Ask yourself that when you look yourself in the mirror, when you comment on stupid things on Twitter, on Instagram. Have your own opinion, but don't forget, United was here before us. Manchester United will be when we die as well. So take care of the club, first of all. You, you mentioned that, Bojan. You're one of the, I'm going to have to admit, one of the few ex-players that will speak out about the owners, will speak out against them and, and sort of take them to task on the way they run the club. Do you think more ex-United players need to do that? Do you think we need to see a bit more unity? We saw it against the Super League. We saw a lot of ex-players speaking up against the Super League. Do you think we need to see more ex-players talking about the Glazers? Listen, I really hope they do. But at the same time, why I pressure human being is something they don't feel comfortable with. You know, I'm the, I'm the actually one that, that had most things to lose. I didn't earn that amount of money in the game like some of our biggest stars did. Some of our pundits in the game now with the bigger names. I lost my job for two years at MUTV. I didn't care because at the same time, if I was going to work at MUTV, it was my opinions. I'm a pundit on Swedish television, even on Norwegian television. I'm here because my bosses let me be. They let me say what I think about. They let me speak my mind. And we live in a society. It's not North Korea. But I would love bigger names, bigger players, especially in the UK, especially the players the supporters listen to. Because you know yourself as well in England, like if you have a name, you make it as a pundit. But at the same time, if you listen to some of the pundits you have over in England, I was like, okay, I might knew this. Because at the same time, they played so much many, many more games than I did, and still they don't see the game. Still, they don't read about the game. Still, they don't understand that football is actually played outside the United Kingdom as well. At the same time, that they have the power in their voice on the social media, on telly, to actually make our club, like Manchester United, stronger. You, will not, you should never pressure anybody to an opinion. But at the same time, me, as a smaller ex-player, smaller in, in the name-wise over in the UK, if I can express myself, why shouldn't bigger names do the same? Because we will be stronger. And then the club will have to listen to all those people. But at the same time, you don't know what's happening behind the scenes. What kind of deal some of the players have with the club. Uh, how will they actually... Uh, how, how would that hurt their businesses outside football? But having an opinion, it's freedom of speech. As long as I have freedom of speech, as long as I speak on Swedish, Norwegian, English telly, I would tell you the honest truth about Manchester United. If, do, if people are supporters and ex-players don't see that we're losing our passion, that we're losing our club, that we're losing our stature, then they're blind. We left it we left this almost too long. But with this Super League stuff and Gary Neville finally actually speaking out and actually big credit to him to saying that he should have spoken earlier. But at the same time, better now than never. And he's a big voice for many of the supporters. Rio is as well. People that want stuff, they are more important than me, but also even us, they were academy players. 
if we speak about it, we will strong as a unity. That's what Manchester United is for. Doesn't matter if you played one game of thousand games, you're part of this family. Definitely, definitely, Bojan. Bojan, you was a youngster and you came to Manchester United when it was we were at our peak, really. Would you be put off at all if you were a young player and you were asked to come to Manchester United when you see this Super League, you see the owners, you see some of the mess that's going on? Do you think that could put players off coming to our club? No, listen, players are controlled now by agents, younger players. You know, agents, money, greed. That's what I'm telling you. Even we should take even power from some of the agents. Club needs to actually put put their foot down when it comes to bringing fees and paying fees for 16, 17-year-olds. They are destroying, actually, their lives and careers before their careers are even starting. And with social media, Jay, it's different when I came. When I came in 99, we were the best club in the world. On the pitch, off the pitch. But now, if you look at the social media, 17, 18, 19-year-olds, they don't even start for the under-23s, but they are stars. They're followers. They have a voice. They put pictures up, they're getting comments, likes, positive, negative. All that affects. I didn't have that. I went to training, I went home. We were happy to have internet, but if you put internet on, me and John O'Shea, the phone didn't work because you know yourself, you know, the old time, yeah. like the phone goes <laughs> Show, and all that. Showing so, your age now, Bojan. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I mean. So I'm almost 40 now. So at the same time, I would be put off. Super League. Is a, just the proposal, Jay. I said it to you when we started this. Just to propose this in this moment of time, it's shameful. At the same time, we shouldn't even forget that actually the club signed on on it. They made a statement. It's good they are withdrawn. But we cannot forget what some of the owners tried to do to us and to do to our game. Sorry, this is not America. This is not the NBA or NFL. This is not franchise. Football was created almost, it's almost older than the United States of America is. So they shouldn't forget that either. Liverpool owners, Arsenal owners, our owners. We will take our game back and we will take our clubs back. And we have to actually speak up even more. We have to stand united. You know, some people say, yeah, but doesn't matter if I speak up. Who cares? That's the same thing when we vote. And then when we don't get our elect there, they're like, listen, I should have voted. Speak your mind up. Vote and try to make a difference in this society. Try to be a better human being. As a human being, as a supporter, we have our rights to demand certain things back. And we shouldn't crumble under pressure just because we are smaller comparing to those rich greedy owners or the power that some people have in our countries that you've issued a sort of message there to the fans what message would you have to the owners to the owners yeah. give us our club back start listening to people that put food on your table i said that a couple of years ago stop treating us as a cash machine we, we will never be a cash machine to you manchester united have history. Manchester United have pride. They have proud supporters worldwide. And especially those that were born. They're born and bred from Manchester. Don't take their club away from them. Give them the opportunity to see their club. Give them things to do outside Old Trafford, inside Old Trafford. Give them back the power. Give us our song and our voices back. And this club will give us back something that we missed. We missed our heart, passion. When we go there, we go there with a worry. Every time, even when things were good, we were worried. If we didn't speak when the Glazers took over, we need to speak up now. It's never too late. It's better to speak up now in 2021 than just keep our mouth shut. If we did this with the Super League, no matter what the intentions were, let us do this together and remind the people that we are stronger. That we're going to compete for the Premier League trophies. That we're going to compete for the Champions League finals. That's what the Busby Babes did. That's what Sir Alex Ferguson did. Don't forget that. Bojan, that was um, fantastic. Really impassioned. Love, to hear, love hearing all that. And I hope that 
other ex-players and I hope that fans and I hope the owners and the pals that be listen listen to people like you and join in. They have, they have to listen. Uh, they have to listen in a way as well. But don't pressure the ex-players. You know, so, some of our supporters as well, like, why don't you speak up? You have the voice. Listen, if you're not comfortable with it, you're never going to get a passion through your speech because everything is going to be automated. You know, when Gary Neville spoke after the game against Burnley, that was passion. You can feel his heart. And pundits or ex-players should speak more with their hearts sometimes. We all see the game. We all want to hear some tactical things that are happening during the game. But what, ex what pundits need to do more is show the people they're passionate. There is, there is a supporter inside them, not just a pundit. So don't pressure them too much. They will come out out of their shell when they see the movement. And the movement is us, normal people. Normal people that actually sweat and grind, work to pay our rent and to pay our season ticket or hopefully get a ticket to watch our favorite club play. I think there's less people from Manchester that get tickets to watch Manchester United than people from different continents. And that's wrong as well. Who's going to pay them prices sometimes? Give Manchester the club back. Easy. Easy. It, it should be. I wish it was, but you're right. That's what we all want to see. That's what we want to see as fans. And that's what we've been crying out for, many of us, ever since the Glazers took over. And hopefully, this can be the start, as you said earlier, this could be the start of something. This could be the start of a movement, perhaps. Listen, our movement, every away game, there's a movement. And I hope we get that same feeling when we play the Old Trafford as well. The best thing I know, I don't like, I, I love going to Old Trafford. Don't, don't, listen, don't get me wrong. But to go to an away game, there's nothing better that I know in my life, except watching Red Star Belgrade, though. But <laughs> going, going to an away game with proper United supporters. Listen, I get goosebumps now speaking to you and thinking about the away end. The song, the passion, the love in the people's eyes. That's what I need to see at Old Trafford. Not people mumbling, looking at their phones, taking selfies, look at me at Old Trafford, hashtag here and there, oh, the Wi-Fi is shit. Who cares about the Wi-Fi? Watch the game. Just watch the game. Everybody knows the Wi-Fi is shit at Old Trafford, but didn't come there to fucking put pictures on. Sorry about my language. I apologize. It's watch fine. the game. Watch the game. Easy. I mean, people, yeah, you go up, they're like, hey, sit down, the stewards. Listen, just relax. Let us get that feeling back as well. You know yourself when I'm speaking about Jay, some games at Old Trafford against the smaller sides, honestly, it's like it's worse than theater. It's like it's, it's so quiet and you try to get a song on and people are looking at you like you're mad and all that. But when you go away, you're singing on the train, you're singing on the way there. It doesn't matter the results, you're there, you're showing your true colors. That is what the support, supporters are all about. And same with the Super League. How will my Red Star Belgrade get an opportunity to play against the big giants? They are a big giant, but they are a sleeping giant. How will we get a chance to play in the Champions League? Taking, taking people's dreams away, you know what I mean? So I'm happy, but um, we have loads more things to do than just squashing the Super League. No, you're absolutely right, Bojan. Loads more to do, and hopefully... We'll start doing it soon. I know there's protest plans. There's a lot of anger out there. And hopefully we can turn this into something that brings about a bit of change for Manchester United. Change for the good as well. Yeah, of course, we had the protest before as well, 15 years ago. But that didn't help as well. Some people were called mad. And these people now, after 15 years, they're like getting some redemption back. Like, yeah, maybe they were right. Yeah, of course they were right. Of course they're right. When you give people with greed uh, power, they're going to they're gonna use it. Nobody, no owners anymore think about the people. It's like in every job, you know, like, the big bosses don't think about the people that work at the reception. If, if he's going to save money, if he's going to earn money, they're going to fire them, you know what I mean? And they don't think about the human being behind that. How will this affect their life? And it's the same thing with football clubs as well. And that's what it, that's what's the crazy thing is about football should never become baseball, should never become basketball or American, I mean, talking about NFL, we're talking about Americans now. Never franchises and all that. Listen, how, how did it start? Like I told you, football is older than the United States of America. It's our game. Do you, do you see that, Bojan? Right. Do you, do you think we could ever get to a point where we see something like that happen to the, to the English game? When you talk about franchising, when you talk about, you know, we've seen it in America, teams get moved, things like that. Do you think that could ever happen or do you think that's too far-fetched? <laughs> Nothing is too far-fetched anymore, to be honest. If they even can just propose this, like I told you, during a pandemic, 
then these plans, if you give the wrong owners authority, more power, it will give them even more greed to think about the money, about the wallet. I'm happy actually that Andrea Agnelli, the owner of Juventus as well, one of the most powerful people in Europe, doesn't feel as powerful anymore today. It was his idea with Florentino Perez because their clubs were losing money. Now he sits there and thinking, what am I going to do now? So when people like that land and they feel like us, like normal people again, when they think that Oof, I cannot win every battle, that's what they start thinking as well. So listen, nothing is far-fetched anymore. Listen, this world is crazy. It's 2021, 2022 is going to be even more crazy, like I told you. So we have to make sure the stuff like this don't happen. We cannot have closed leagues. We have to have domestic leagues. We have to give people like Sheffield United opportunity to come back to the Premier League and beat United at Old Trafford, you know? These fairy tales, maybe they're not going to generate money for us, but we'll give the mind, lesser clubs, smaller clubs, something to always to dream about. Yeovil Town, they still speak about the time United came to visit them in the FA Cup. You know, things like that. That is, that, that is the charm. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm in love in this game too much. But this love should never disappear. Even if there's other propositions, even if there's things they, they want to achieve. Football, football should be love, should be passion. And we shouldn't be discussing these things every other week. You know? I thought that the worst thing that happened this year was uh, VAR, but I was wrong. <laughs> this happened. <laughs> it was not just enough with the pandemic. All this just shit happens to, to, to 2021. So, listen, uh, it, it's been a good couple of days uh, comparing to how it started. So, let us continue. Let us finish the season. Uh, uh, let us cement that second position and maybe even closing the gap on Manchester City and let us win the Europa League. Uh, give the supporters a trophy. That would be a great, great end to the season. Um, and it's been great chatting to you as well, Bojan. I love talking to you. We'll have to get you on again. We'll have to get you on the channel again. I'd love to talk to you about your one of your favourite players, or he used to be anyway, uh, Milinkovic Savic. I remember you was always raving yeah, about him. Yeah, I was. I, I was. I was. The thing is, you know, when we spoke about him when we were in Norway, that was the time yeah. he should have left. You know, when you, when, you, when you stay at the club, when you, when you already decided you need to leave because you had your best season of your career, and then when you stayed, you always, you, you don't, push to a next level so he should have left there so we'll see what happens we'll we'll see what happens there's other players as well of that sh of that shelf to pick off but we need to get the right players with the right mentality in i think we showed everybody what players with heart and pride and quality can do like bruno fernandez he changed our season people are like yeah it's one player yeah one player sometimes is enough to show the others what kind of standards you need to play for our club we cannot just set we cannot just settle for people showing heart Oh, look at the tackle and all that. Manchester United players need to play. They need to have a first touch. They need to have a vision. They need to make sure that when I watch the game from my sofa, I was like, oof, now I understand why I could never play there. They shouldn't give supporters a thing like, I could have hit that pass. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that, no. that, is, that's, that is sometimes what supporters say. But when Keno, when Scozzi, when Miron played, nobody, everybody kept their mouth shut. I was like, wow. Yeah. Definitely. That's what Bruno Fernandes gives me, you know? He certainly does. He gives us a lot of that, a lot of us those feelings as well. Bojan, it's been great chatting to you, mate. I appreciate you coming on the channel, and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Yeah, this neighbour, I'm gonna need to. He's just drilling and drilling and drilling. Hey, you cannot drill twelve o'clock. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. Good chatting to you. No I'll problem. speak to you again take soon. Care. Take care. Take bye, care, bye. mate. Bye bye. Bye.